Sziasztok! Ez egy angol nyelvű epizód lesz, és a Startup Safari kapcsán beszélgetünk az egyik fő előadóval. Feliratozni nem fogom, úgyhogy ha az angol miatt nem szeretnétek nézni, akkor csak szóltam. Most viszont, ahogy, a, ahogy az angol tanárom mindig mondta, let's switch to English, kezdjük el! So hi everyone, my name is Peter Santo, welcome to the vlog. It's a Startup Safari edition and I'm here with Mick who is one of the keynote speakers of uh, Startup Safari here in Budapest and uh, he's from Copenhagen who, where he's very involved with the local ecosystem. He's the founder and CEO of Good Monday and uh, now we're just gonna cruise around the city. I will show him around. Actually, you wanted to see something, Mick. What, what, what did you see in the city that you wanted to check out? Yeah, but I, I went uh, running this morning and I saw this big castle on the other side of the river. Mm -hmm. It kind of looked like uh, Lannister Castle from Game of Thrones. <laughs> And I kind of want to see what, uh, what that's yeah, all so about. So for all the Game of Thrones fans out there, we're going to check that out. Okay, we can start from that. Do you know which one it is? I, I think you, you, you were thinking about either the castle or there is the, the uh, a chapel next to it, like a church. Uh, so either one of them. So we will go there and, and you will tell me which one you think yeah, about. Yeah, amazing. And if you know which one that is, <laughs> um, also comment in the video. So yeah, let's let's start with... with um, with your background and um, you are from Copenhagen, you went to school there and uh, you, are, you are working there. Um, what do you think about the local um, ecosystems and why, I mean, you, you could be anywhere in the world, we could be sitting in a car anywhere, why did you, you choose to, to be in Copenhagen? Yeah, so actually I, um, <clears throat> I left Copenhagen eight years ago and went to New York and I've been, uh, I've been there for seven years and last and you year, came back and then i came back so i've been home in copenhagen because it is home uh, for one year now and i came back because there was no one in europe doing what uh, good monday does and i really want to get this started so i have a co-founder called morten meisner mm -hmm. uh, him and i we sat down and looked at the market we looked at uh, the opportunities in europe and we saw copenhagen as the perfect uh, starting point for rolling out the first workspace management platform that can actually utilize everything within the workspace. So that, that's why we can. In Europe, yeah. Did, did, is there a company, a similar company doing the same thing in the States? No, there's some trying to do something that's uh, uh, remotely like this, uh, mm -hmm. managed by Q. It's called in the US. It was uh, acquired by WeWork, WeWork two weeks okay. ago. Oh, two weeks ago, uh, just recently. Yeah, just recently. They've done a tremendous job. Like they've really been great at it. They what, had, what was the ticket size? Is it public? I don't know. Some of the articles said around 250 to 280. Wow. But I don't think the amount was set. I think people are still speculating mm -hmm. on the amount. Um, Where did you get the idea from? Like you, you were living mm -hmm. in New York. Yeah. Was it from like a, an experience uh, that you saw that, 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 that you would be needing that? Or, or you just saw the market, you conducted the research? Yeah, I had a company in uh, in New York called Lemon Squeeze, and we had uh, a big workspace around an acre uh, with tons of people in it. And running uh, a workspace like that is almost like running a company in itself. Hmm. And I had so many contracts, 50 contracts, and service level agreements, and termination periods, and like Excel sheets with contact info, and I couldn't keep anything under control. I had no financial overview. I didn't know who to contact when I needed something done, and I just needed one system to fix it all, but with local providers that were special. So when I when we got acquired in 17, it kind of nagged me that this system didn't exist in Europe. And Maud and I, we sat down, we had tons of beers, <laughs> and uh, just discussed how would this work. And we ended up doing some wireframes, and I flew back to Europe four mm -hmm. times, presenting it to potential clients and potential mm -hmm. um, suppliers, partners. And and this was like leases. the idea phase, like you, yeah. you haven't started, yeah. you were just validating and, and uh, exactly. talking to potential. Okay. Exactly. You have the validation phase, the initial phase, and then you have a nail it phase and a scale it phase. So we kind of went through this whole cycle that you do with a startup, but there was just only green flags and people are kind of like, this must exist somewhere in Europe, but it just didn't. So we kind of had our own path we needed to follow. Sometimes it's good when you're alone because then you kind of have the market. But with this, it's a 
a hundred year old B2B service market that needs to be cultivated as well. So it was a big task, it still is. And how do you see like um, the market adjusting to it? Because this is something new, of course it's an innovation, but this market is very traditional, if you will. Yes, but it's not so traditional that we haven't seen it anywhere else. So if you're running a great company, you have sales systems, of course, for your sales guys to make sure that they can uh, reach their true potential, but also so you have all data, you're not vulnerable, and they can do their best. You have the same within marketing, you have a system there. You have the same within finance, you have the same within HR. But the office just doesn't have a system. And all companies that are just a tad ambitious and want to make sure that their business is scalable, they need a system for their office as well. And they understand that, yeah, there is a real need and it would just help them. Yes. Okay, so living in the States, for you, you lived there for seven years. Yeah. And you basically came back. So you have a very good understanding about the culture and the difference. And as now you being part of your local ecosystem, how do you see the difference either within Europe and now that you, you met some people here in Hungary as well and you, you have your experience and you, you, you saw the company, you exited. So what's, how do you see the difference and uh, do you have any tips or suggestions for people who are not in the, cent, the, the center of the, the, the ecosystems or the global market? I don't think I got the question. Hmm? <laughs> you know what? Let, 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 let me give you my two cents. Um, yeah. I lived in the States. I started to work with, with startups in, in, in California and I just see a very different approach from all the players in the ecosystem. So for example, here in Hungary, when we um, first time entrepreneurs and founders, they don't understand what the global market is, how they should think small for maybe at the beginning as you said that you, you mm. now you started the company in Copenhagen and then grow and scale up from there because they don't see they, they cannot understand what the market is on a global level and on the other hand they don't have access to knowledge to finances stuff like that because investors here we have seed run series a uh, series b rounds yeah. but on a much lower scale like yeah. a series a round here is like a seed or pre-seed in the states yeah and also revenue wise when you have a revenue here which is fine for a series a it wouldn't make it for an accelerator like 500 or Y combinator so this is a gap that i think somehow players who want to help need to work on and i just want to get your understanding your experience in in this i think there's two things um, one is I think that all the capitals in Europe, a lot of them, like especially in the Nordics at the moment, you see that companies are born with a global mindset. They weren't 10 years ago. So something has changed. We've seen that it's actually possible to expand out to new areas. Um, we still, in, in the Nordics, we still have smaller rounds than you do in the US, much smaller. Uh, and we also have like, our seed is like their, uh, our A round is like their seed round and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a different uh, creature when it comes to Budapest and Hungary because uh, money are even smaller here. You can see that when you just look at currency or how much it, <laughs> it costs to rent an office like a living, or a yeah. cup of coffee, right? Because it is just a tenth of the price on everything, including salaries. Salaries is probably 30% of what it would be in, in the Nordics, right? And if you compare like, a, a the living means yeah. in, in okay Copenhagen is a very expensive city yeah but if you compare it to, to Hungary so let's say or, or we can go back and forth so what is the salary and what is the, the the cost of living and if you compare it because what my experience is here is that here let's say you make a thousand euros or two thousand euros and then your spending is between like 500 to 1000 yep. on the country so this gives you a gap uh, if you compare it to uh, let's say Copenhagen how, how how is the situation yeah you can say like in Copenhagen 100 square meters is like the, it's probably between 2 and 3000 euros mm -hmm. and the cost of living with everything it depends on the family situation but you'll probably need like uh, like five times as much as you're making here mm -hmm. to make it in Copenhagen I have a and you make five yeah. times more or you make ten times more there I actually don't like know what, what, what would a normal um, marketing coordinator get here in I, I would say like a thousand euros 
Yeah, then it's like five to ten times as much. Five to ten times, and the cost yeah. of living is five times. So then the ratio is actually better for Copenhagen. It's five times as much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe maybe it is like a thousand euro isn't a lot. A thousand euro is what you get a student employee <laughs> in Denmark. Yeah, that's a huge difference there. Yeah, it is. But so it's, it's also, really it high here, easier. and I know that the microphone won't be that good. But let's just turn on the, the AC. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So you were saying. Um, no. So sitting up, like it would be fun to also set up a company here in Budapest because you can actually get a lot of great people, a low salary, and I've been uh, discussing everything from how to run a business and how to create rounds, but also how to create traction with people here in Budapest. And the understanding on how to run a company is actually extremely high. So uh, you're well educated. A lot of you guys that are well educated mm -hmm. are not educated from Hungary, but you've been abroad, yep. either England or, or the US. And you actually see a lot of Hungarians going abroad to study, like, oh, which, yeah. uh, like which makes sense. And then when they come back, they also need another paycheck than if you've studied locally here, right? Um, but I think there's a ton of stuff to do here. And the, the city is also, you can see that with Startup Safari, like people really want it. And I think that's the, that's the start, right? It's actually having passionate people who are dedicated, who wants to change something and sees a higher purpose in doing something. People are polite, they're fun. <laughs> that's also a big thing, right? I think the people who, and actually you, you represent this, they, the, the people who go and work and study abroad and, and get like a, a culture or diversity and then they bring it back to the local community are actually the ones who can provoke change if you will. Yeah, but in general, no matter where you're from, you need to leave that yes. place and come back. You don't even have to come back, but often you will come back because there is grandparents or friends and stuff like that it's your local culture right but everybody needs to leave at some point and mm -hmm. come back just to get some inspiration or see the world from like from a different point of view I would make it mandatory on a university university level or college level to get a degree yeah it just gives you so much so now we see the castle and we see the other oh it's the one up there the one up there all yeah. right okay Okay, it's the fi the fisherman's wharf actually. Okay. Okay. It yeah. Looks amazing. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. You're not like gonna Game make it. France. You're not gonna. You're not gonna make it over here. Not here, but we <laughs> we're gonna. You know, as a as a startup or an entrepreneur should do it. We're gonna hack our way in. <laughs> mm. So you coming back? Uh, how do you? How are you involved in in your local ecosystem? And do you help other entrepreneurs and? Uh, Yes. Work with them. What, what, what do you do in, in that manner? Yeah, so I help everyone who needs help. And I think that's the starting point. It's helping as much as humanly possible with the time you have. Uh, the ecosystem is so small in Copenhagen still. It's, it's much bigger than 10 years ago. Um, we had a great guy called Yasinko who created Copenhagen for the win. And he, um, he kind of gathered all the entrepreneurs and investors and stuff like that. So we have a big system, but it's still not bigger than you know everyone. And when there's new entrepreneurs on the way, you um, you help them because that's what you do. Because you also want the ecosystem to, to survive and you want it to be the best. Because the better the ecosystem, the more noise and attention you'll get. And it's good for everyone. And we can see right now that it's a, it's a good thing that we had Falcon.io, that we had Vino, that we had Plan Day, that we had Pleo, that we have all these companies just to eat taking off because then suddenly you get more interest from investors, from press, from other people. So you need to help as much as That's you can. You to help. Yeah. There's a spillover effect of being in a community with a great uh, internal network. Definitely. I think it, it just raises the bar. And what, what about like Europe? Like, um, how much do you travel actually? And now you are here in Startup Safari Budapest. Like, do you do you try to get involved in not just the local but regional, European level? Yeah. So I'm pretty lucky because when I was uh, with my old company, I had a lot of uh, speaking gigs where I talked about 
entry and setup and traction validation and scale and growth on how to actually enter new markets as well. Mm -hmm. So I went to all the conferences and uh, spoke at them. And I still do. Now I talk about Good Monday. And I talk about traction validation still. But that allows me to actually come out and meet new people and ask mm -hmm. them questions. So today I had a workshop at Startup Safari. And uh, the big thing was just to figure out, okay, do you see any services that I don't see? Do you see the change in office managers becoming workspace offices? And just like dragging out all the knowledge possible for me to be smarter on the way. And you can only be smarter when you're out meeting people. Mm -hmm. um, so last week I was in Amsterdam and I actually walked around just sitting at cafes for five hours. And every time I sat down, I talked to someone next to me and asked them if they worked in an office, how many employees, which kind of services and what do they like and what would it take to retain them in the job? Um, are they sick a lot? Like what would motivate them? Be, You're make constantly them more productive? doing a marketing research basically. Yeah, ongoing. Ongoing an and, in all, and in all countries. So just and making sure that I can learn something on the way. I, I just want to highlight this to, to, to the people listening that Wherever you go, you see it is it as an opportunity to learn, to understand, to get a better understanding about the market. And as an entrepreneur, you you don't stop learning and evolving. But what you do is actually want to. You're not just talking, as they say, right? Like you, you want to listen, you want to understand yeah. what's going on and how you could improve the service and anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, like it's it's so stupid to sit down and think you're the smartest guy in the room, right? So you need to go out there you and talk to other people. Be that guy. Uh, no, you never want to be that guy, and you're not. And you're so not. that like that's uh, the only thing that's true is <laughs> you're not the smartest guy. And I think like my CTO uh, and co-founder Michael Analdus, he uh, he actually set aside a lot of time for his developers to uh, learn. To which I think learn. a big thing, because often you have tight deadlines and you need to get stuff done. But you also need to set aside time to just learn stuff so you can keep on evolving because you're not standing still in your job and just doing stuff. You need to continue your growth. And, you know, you, you always will have deadlines. You always will have uh, difficult projects and, and things that you will need to manage and resolve. And it cannot be an excuse to, to, to stop learning or, or setting aside either me time or, or space and if, if I think on on a personal level you should organize your day days to be able to do that but on, on a company culture level it's amazing when when C level people see that and they actually let the team to to spend time on on just learning and self growth yeah yeah and some it's actually fun. I just had an uh, employee that went to Belfast mm -hmm. and um, I told her to, to, if, when you sit on a bar and you have a pint, uh, see if you can talk to the one sitting next to you and ask them about their office situation. <laughs> ask them if they're happy in their workplace. Ask them which kind of services they like and what they miss and what they would have. And suddenly it's kind of like, it's, it's also um, an opener. It's also something that can actually make your trip even more fun. I know yeah. it's work, but it's also kind of it's inspiration for you as well. And it's something where you feel like you're actually more than just sitting down and typing something in or doing something. Mm -hmm. You're actually involving, you're trying to uh, be business development with the company. I think that's important. That's great. And uh, you gave um, two talks or three talks during the two days? Uh, I'm giving my third. Third, actually, yeah. like in a few hours. Yeah. Um, what are the talks about? Can you like uh, give like a quick summary or any any important thing that whoever sees this would be a good message to deliver? I think the workshop is all about how we can see that office managers are converting into workspace offices because the office is uh, the office is changing. People are beginning to work more remote. You see millennials that are more on Slack than they're actually physically present. Yep. And you see that you don't want to have the same services uh, today as you did 15 years ago. 15 years ago, you were uh, satisfied with just having something at the office because you got paid to be there. Hmm. Today, you need the office to cater to your needs. 
need to treat you like an individual. They need to, you need to be able to reflect yourself in their brand and DNA, which creates uh, a new role because suddenly the companies need to be better, need to be stronger. They need to reflect what they want to do, their purpose through their office, through their services and treat you as someone that's not just a working bee, but also uh, a, a human, human being. Yeah. yeah. So that changes the entire dynamic. So figuring out how the office, the workspace, the environment and the DNA can actually work together, then you'll retain your employees, you'll make them more happy, more productive, you give them a higher purpose to stay longer and be happy at work, which is the number one, right? Create happy employees. That's the word that you need to spread and hopefully many people understand that and will look at work from a different angle. Yeah, I ho we hope so. We can see it like, again, there's, there's no indication that happy employees uh, create uh, worse results. Like happy employees just create no, better results. Yeah. That's just how it is. Exactly. And actually you can measure that, like that there are studies coming up that saying that if you are happier in the workplace, thus in your life then you, you your productivity just grows and increases exactly I think like a great system to use if you should talk about anything else than Good Monday is the SaaS system called Pekin um, which is do? amazing so it's actually a survey that comes out it was created by Casper whole team and um, they're actually in New York now but it, it was a Copenhagen based uh, company um, and instead of measuring on your normal KPIs, revenue and all those like traction KPIs, you're measuring on the satisfaction among your employees, mm -hmm. figuring out if they're happy. Because often when you see happy employees, you see that the results of everything else actually walks hand in hand. And they've done a tremendous job building a great platform. And uh, their name again? Pecan. Pecan. Yeah. P -E like Peak. Yeah, P -A -A exactly. A -K -O -N. O -N. O -N. Yeah. Awesome. Make, thank you very much for the conversation and the ride. You're welcome. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you were new here and you want to see similar things also in Hungarian, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.